and welcome to another tutorial for the Edexcel Further Pure One Math Syllabus. It, this is the last video I'm going to do on matrices and how they represent linear transformations. Taking a look at the scheme of work, we've done everything on matrices now. The only thing we need to cover up, off is sometimes questions come up using the inverse um, and you need to apply the inverse when you're working with some transformations and also the idea of the determinant as an area scale factor in the transformations that tends to come up. So let's finish off these points. Easiest way to do these is by some examples. So I'm going to do an example, two examples in fact, and I suggest you work through them. I would in fact think you know all the knowledge you need to know to be able to answer these questions uh, on your own. Perhaps not the second example but the first, so you may want to have a go at it um, before I work through it. So here's the first example. So what this question says, it says you've got a triangle with vertices A, B and C. So you've got a triangle, let's just make it look like this, we don't know what the thing looks like, but say it's got vertices A, B and C, and it's a triangle there. Okay, it says you apply matrix M uh, to those points. So you do the transformation T, uh, that's transformation T, which is represented by the matrix M, and you get yourself another triangle. Uh, so you do a transformation M. So this is our original triangle here. You do a transformation M and you get a new triangle. And this has uh, position vectors, let's call it 4, 3, 4, 10. And uh, even though these don't, these aren't where they would be in the plane, it doesn't matter, they're somewhere uh, in the plane, but I'm just drawing them in like this, just for ease. And this would be our new triangle, which we call T dashed. Now, it asks us, what are the points A, B and C? How on earth could I find the points A, B and C uh, from these? Well, I know the matrix applied to um, this transformation here, uh, applied to these points here, gives me this. So if I did the inverse matrix on these coordinates, it would get me back to the ones um, in the smaller triangle or in the original triangle, T. So the thing is, I need to work out the inverse matrix. Well, I should know from my previous work if I have a matrix A, B, C, D, if it has an inverse, if the determinant is not zero, then the inverse is given by 1 over the determinant, which is A, D, subtract B, C, and you swap these over, so it would be D there and A there, and you make these uh, the opposite sign, so negative B, negative C. So in this particular question, for example, Rm is 4, negative 1, 3 and 1, so our M inverse would be 1 over um, this 4, um, uh, subtract negative 3, which would be 7. Uh, you swap these over, so it would be 1 there and 4 there. And you make these the opposite signs, so it would be 1 there and 3 there. So that is our inverse matrix. So if I applied this inverse matrix to these uh, position vectors here, it would get me the original position vectors of the original triangle. So let's do that. Let's do a seventh, one, one, three, four, multiplied by these position vectors, which I'm going to say four, three for that one, four, ten for that one, and negative four, negative three for that one. And if I multiply these out, they will tell me the original position vectors. To do this, it's easier to leave the 7th uh, out the front and just multiply the matrices first, then multiply by the 7th at the very end, the last step. So you keep your 7th where it is, you multiply these out, that row times that column, and you would get 7. That row times that column, you would get 14. That row times that column there, and you would get negative 7. That row times that column there, and you would get yourself um, sorry when I what, that should have been a minus sign there that should 
that should have been a minus sign there when I made these minuses. So that should be a minus sign there. Sorry, when I inverted that matrix, that should be one, that should be minus one. I knew there was something wrong as I was doing this. So that times that would give me zero. That multiplied by uh, this row multiplied by this column here would give me 40 take away 12, which is 28. And this row here times that column there, well, that would give me um, zero again. Then I can multiply in the seventh and I would get one zero, two four and negative one zero. So what is the original point A? The original point A is therefore uh, the coordinate one zero. What is the original point B? Well, it's the coordinate two four. And what is the original point C? Well, it's the coordinate negative one and zero. And so we found ourselves the A, B and C. Okay, it asks us to sketch triangles T and T primed. I'll do this on a separate uh, piece of working. So if I just copy this over here, I'm going to copy my A, B and C onto the next slide. If you don't mind, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller as well, just so I've got um, some more space there. That was supposed to be a one there. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller just so I've got a bit more space. So I'm sketching triangles T and T prime, or T and T dash. So T, uh, the original T was one zero. So one zero is here. Two four two uh, um, four. So this is one zero. Two four. And negative one zero. So negative one and zero here. Something like this. Okay, so if I draw in a triangle there, it should look something like this. And that's my original triangle T. My new triangle, uh, it had vertices 4, 3, so 4 across and 3 up. Be somewhere here. Um, 4, 10, 4 across and 10 up. So it'd be somewhere here, 4, 10. And negative 4, negative 3. So 4 back and 4 down. It'd be somewhere here. So this would be negative 4, negative 3. And drawing in that triangle there, how would it look? Well, it would look something like this here. Okay, so there are um, two triangles. Now, uh, the last step, that's part uh, B done, I've sketched the triangles. The last step, part C, it says show that the area of T prime, by the way, this one's T prime, show that the area of T dash or T prime is the area of T multiplied by the determinant of the matrix. Okay, well, how could we work out the area of each of these um, triangles here? Well, Let's go for the little triangle here. The area of a triangle is the base times the perpendicular height. The base of this triangle is of length 2. So base times height. It would have length 2. What's its perpendicular height? Well, it's 4 high because this point here is, is 4 along the y-axis. So it would be four times, uh, 2 times 4, which is 8. What about triangle T primed? Well, we could think of it as having its base here, okay, and that could be its base, and this here, this distance here, could be its perpendicular height. So its base, it goes from 4, 3 to 4, 10, it's, if we're doing base times height, its base must be 7, and what's this height here? Well, it's 4 across here, and it's negative 4 back here, so the width there is 8, so it would be 7 times 8, which would be equal to 56. Now, uh, we've worked out the area of, of triangle T prime, the area of triangle T. Last thing to do is work out the determinant of our original matrix M. Well, the determinant of that, we already worked it out previously. We knew that was equal to 7. So therefore, the area of T primed is equal to 56. And that is also equal 
to the determinant of m multiplied by the area of t because the determinant of m was 7 and the area of t was 8 and 7 times 8 is 56 as required. Okay, so we used inverse matrices in this question um, because we were given the image after the transformation and we were asked what the original points were. And lastly, we found something quite interesting. We found the area of the transformed triangle or transformed shape is the area of the original shape multiplied by the determinant of the matrix transformation. And that's something we need to know in this syllabus. In fact, on the next slide, I have got this as a rule. After you do a, uh, a transformation on the shape, the area of the image, the area of the new shape, is always equal to the area of the original shape, the object, multiplied by the determinant of the matrix transformation. And these lines here, they just mean make the determinant positive, make determinant a positive number when you're doing that. Image is the new shape, object is the old shape. So the error of the new shape is equal to the error of the old shape multiplied by the, uh, the positive determinant. And let's do a question just to finish off with that idea in our mind. This is the question here. Imagine you had a matrix 2, negative 1, 4, 3, and you transform the rectangle with these vertices. Find the coordinates of the vertices in the image. Well, let's do that. That's very easy. All you do is you apply the matrix 2, negative 1, 4, 3, and you multiply it by the position vectors of each of these. So you multiply it by the matrix made up of 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, 1, and 4, 0. You multiply that out using matrix multiplication. This row times this column would be 0. This row times this column would be negative 1. This row times this column here would be uh, 7. This row times this column here would be 8. This row times this column would be 0. This row times this column would be 3. This row times this column would be 16 plus 3, which is 19. And this row times this column would be 16. And these are the coordinates of the new image of R. So the new image of R, its coordinates are 0, 0, Uh, negative 1, 3, 7, 19, and 8, 16. Now that's a complicated shape, that's clearly not a rectangle, actually that's some other shape, but we can work out the area of this shape quite easily, even though it's a complicated shape, we can work it out very easily, because we know the rule that the area, I'm going to call this, uh, this shape here r dashed, of r dashed, is equal to the determinant of the matrix A multiplied by the area of the original uh, rectangle R. Now, the determinant of this matrix here, well, it's AD minus BC, so it's 6 subtract negative 4, which is 10, so it's 10, multiplied by the area of the original rectangle. Well, the original rectangle, it doesn't take a genius to work it out, 0, 0, 0, 1, um, sorry, uh, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1 is there, 4, 1 is here, and 4, uh, 4, 0 is there, and 4, 1 is there. It looks like that. So it's a rectangle, 1 high and 4 across, so it has an area of 4. So it would be 10 multiplied by 4, and you would get 40 units squared. So it doesn't give us a unit in this particular example, but uh, the answer must be equal to 40 units squared. Uh, square. And that's it, we're done. We've actually worked out an area of something that we have no idea what it looks like using this rule. Okay, just to finish off then, I suggest to make sure this is all in your head. Read chapter 4, page 99 to 103. Do exercise 4H, questions 1 to 3, and exercise 4I, questions 1 to 5. And that is all we have to do on matrices. Thank you very much for watching.